Hey, what's going on? Ryan here with Intersection Rank Records, uh, ranking the different post Jerry Garcia incarnations and or solo projects of the of the Grateful Dead. You know, there's a couple things I'm going to leave out. I am going to include Phil Lesh and Friends and Rat Dog. I'm not going to include the Fair of the Well shows, even though I saw the two Chicago shows. I'm not going to include the duo short run of New York, Boston, and Chicago of Bobby and Phil. I saw the, the Chicago shows there as well, but um, I'm going to include six projects. The other ones, The Dead, Further, um, Dead and Company, Phil Lush and Friends, and Rap Dog. And I like them all. Uh, Wolf Brothers, I'm going to kind of lump in with Rat Dog, even though it's a separate project. In fact, I'm, I'm not really going to include them just because I don't, I, I have not seen a show. Um, and I like, let me say this, we're celebrating the Grateful Dead's music and the post-dead material here. I like all the projects. Just because somebody's going to come in in sixth place doesn't mean that I don't like it. Um, I'm also not going to include um, Seven Walkers or uh, Mickey Hart's Mystery Box, even though I've seen both of them as well, and I like both of them. There's just not enough, um, not enough tours, uh, and I don't have enough knowledge of them. And really, we don't. We have. We're talking about the drummers. Um, and not one of the singers or of the band. So, yeah, I, this is my show. I can make my list, right? Coming in at six, Rat Dog, Bob Weir's uh, solo project that was started prior to the breakup of the Grateful Dead in 1995. Um, you know, Rob Wasserman on bass. Um, you know, I've seen them several times, probably 10 times, uh, several times when they come through the St. Louis area with Johnny Johnson on guitar. I think Johnny Johnson might have been actually a member at one point. Jeff uh, Cimenti was a member. Um, Jay Lane, I believe, on drums as well. You know, great, great for what it was. A lot of the times early on, they were just doing Bobby songs. Um, you know, maybe not quite as... Um, full of a presentation um, of the Grateful Dead music as I would want. Coming in at number five, the other ones formed in 1990, um, uh, I guess 1998. Um, you know, there was a further festival, I think in 96, there was a band that played, but the first incarnation is Weir, Lesh, Mickey Hart, Bruce Hornsby, Mark Curran, Steve Kimmock on guitars, Dave Ellis on sax, and John Molo. Uh, they went back out in 2000 with uh, Alfonso Johnson on bass uh, and add Bill Kreutzmann um, and, and then Phil Leaves. Uh, I saw the other ones a few times. You know, Curran, Kimmock, guitar package combo for me doesn't give me, doesn't do it for me. Uh, but they were good shows. Seeing Bruce uh, perform again with the Dead was awesome. Coming in at number four, Dead and Company. I love Dead and Company. I've seen them multiple, multiple times. Um, uh, of course, you know Bob Weir, Billy Crutzman, uh, Mickey Hart, John Mayer, Jeff Chimenti, and O'Teal. The last version uh, minus Billy. Insert Jay Lane. You know, some of these shows, uh, July 1st, uh, 2017, for instance, at Wrigley is one of the best dead uh, show I've ever seen, period. Um, also, some things that maybe I didn't like quite as much sometimes, but what a great run they had from 2015 to 2023. I'm sure they'll continue on in the future. That's my number four. Coming in at number three, The Dead. The Dead is a band started in 2003, featuring Bob Weir, Phil Lesh, Bill Crutzman, 
Mickey Hart, Jimmy Herring on guitar, Jeff Cimenti, Rob Baracco on keys, and Joan Osborne doing some background vocals. That next summer, they added Warren Haynes to the fold. Uh, Joan Osborne uh, bowed out, and Jeff comes in and replaces Rob on keys. So the 04 is Weir, Lesh, Kritzman, Hart, Jimmy Herring, Warren Haynes, and Jeff. These were great shows. These were great tours. They did another tour in 08 and 09 um, with, um, I guess, Jimmy Herring bowing out and just Warren Haynes. You know, awesome, awesome stuff. Um, you know, especially with Jimmy Herring there and Haynes in 04. I mean, great, great, great stuff. Speaking of Haynes and Herring, my number two incarnation of the post-dead bands or tributes or whatever you want to call them, Phil Lesh and Friends. I love Phil Lesh. Um, I love the quintet. The quintet is uh, Rob Baracco, uh, John Molo on drums, uh, Jimmy Herring, Warren Haynes, and Phil Lesh on bass. Uh, that band started, I think, in two th uh, 2000. 2001 summer and all year they did um you know just just tour i think they did spring summer and fall tours uh, i think they played again in 2002 uh, at which point they kind of splintered off and you know john molo stayed and he brought in a cast of characters um everybody from jackie green to you know, luther dickinson and 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 <laughs> You weren't a great guitar player in the in the in the 2000s uh, if you didn't play with Phil Lesh at some point. Phil Lesh and Friends is my second favorite post Jerry Garcia incarnation of uh, dead members. My number one is Further. Further was established in 2009. That lineup was Bob Weir, Phil Lesh, John uh, Kaljacek uh, on guitar previously from Dark Star Orchestra, um, Joe Russo on drums, J Jeff Cimenti, and Jay Lane. Uh, uh, again, so Russo and Lane on drums, Jeff, uh, John, uh, Kaldicek, uh, Phil Lesh, and Bob Weir, just amazing. Um, lots of covers, lots of unusual covers, high energy, Grateful Dead music, I saw them a few times in St. Louis. I saw them in the Greek Theater in Los Angeles. Um, to 2010, we are gonna add Zoe Ellis on vocals and Sunshine Garcia on backing vocals along with the guys. And then in 2010 to 2014, kind of the meat of the band was Bob Weir, Phil Lesh, John uh, Kaldicek, um Jeff Cimenti, Joe Russo again on drums. So no Jay, Jay Lane, just Joe Russo, and then Sunshine Garcia and Jeff Pearson on vocals. You know, just high energy again. Um, really loved the run, really loved John's guitar playing because it was very <laughs> close to Jerry, you know, and his voice was good too. Uh, of course, you still had Bobby and Phil, and anytime you have... I, I need Phil and my dead and my dead uh, tribute bands. I, I just do. I think he's. I think Jerry's the most important figure in the band's history, then followed by Phil. That's just how I feel. I feel like if you don't have one of those guys, it's just tough to do the music justice because you had two guys that were improvising at high levels and really just. I mean, Phil played the bass like a lead instrument. Um, obviously, Jerry did too, and there's just you just can't replace. I don't care who the bass player is, you can't replace Phil Lesh, Period. Um, you know, even in later versions that are still going on at Phil Lesh and Friends, for instance, it's it's, it's amazing. That's just my thoughts. Uh, take a look at my channel. I do shows almost every day. I say every day, and it really is every day. But I've been working on a show coming up in two weeks with my band, Lords and Sandy. So I. Been practicing my guitar instead of doing shows. Peace out. Be good. See ya.